D. James Kennedy Ministries presents Truths That Transform. Efforts to deny religious freedom are nothing new in America. But in our day, these efforts, often led by the ACLU, are seeking to systematically dismantle the First Amendment. Find out what this means to you and what you can do about it on today's Truths That Transform. Welcome to Truths That Transform, a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries, where we are standing for truth and defending your freedom. It's nothing new to hear that your religious liberties are being threatened. That has been happening for quite some time in America. But the push towards secularization is growing even stronger in our day. Later in this program, we'll take a look at a prominent organization whose sole purpose seems to be to curtail every public manifestation of Christianity. And we will share an important new resource with you on efforts to silence Christianity by labeling it hate speech. We begin by taking a look at a Missouri case that the U.S. Supreme Court will be deciding in just a few weeks. In that case, children at Trinity Lutheran Preschool in Missouri were denied basic safety on their playgrounds because of their religious affiliation. Our own John Rabe had a chance to sit down with Jordan Lawrence, an attorney representing the Lutheran preschool involved in this case. This Trinity Lutheran case is a major case. It's going to be decided by the Supreme Court really any day now. What are the basics of this case? What is it that makes this case so important? What's, what's the Trinity Lutheran case all about? Well, amazingly, this is a case involving recycled tires and religious liberty. And it started with the state of Missouri setting up a program to get uh, tires out of its landfills and recycle them. And they gave grants to nonprofit groups to buy uh, playground surfaces made of chopped up uh, recycled tires. And Trinity Lutheran has a preschool. They applied. Uh, they, they qualified for a grant. And the state turned them down saying, uh, we have a state constitutional provision that says no governmental aid can go to a church under any circumstances, including something like this. So Alliance Defending Freedom filed a lawsuit. We lost every step of the way until the Supreme Court granted review in January of 2016. So this is really a broad-based program. It's not as if there's some sort of special qualifications needed in order to access it. That makes it seem strange that a particular school would be excluded from it. There are secular, non-religious criteria that the church fully met. How many children are being served by this? Do you allow people outside of your school to come and play? And they also really stressed having a advertising campaign to publicize the fact that uh, your school or whatever has a playground surface made out of this recycled tire to encourage other people to buy them for their own playgrounds or for their own organization's playgrounds. Trinity Lutheran met all these criteria. They were ranked by state officials as fifth out of 44 applicants. They gave out 14 grants, but not to Trinity Lutheran because it was a church. That was the only reason it was denied. If it had been, uh, uh, you know, Fred's preschool, they would have gotten the money. Okay, so explain then why this playground program or any other state benefit where state money goes to a religious school is not a violation of the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment. I mean, giving money to a playground program is not the establishment of religion. Right, and, and uh, the establishment of religion deals with things such as forcing people to attend church, forcing them to contribute to a church, uh, things like that, uh, using tax money to pay for pastors being trained. Those are the types of things that were traditionally understood to be violations of the Establishment Clause, or at least the, the 
uh, harms that the Establishment Clause was intended to deal with. What it was not intended to do is to basically ostracize religious groups from all governmental programs whatsoever, uh, making them like pariahs, pushing them to the outskirts of society. Because it is true that this Lutheran church in uh, Columbia, Missouri can continue uh, holding church services, preaching Lutheran doctrine, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and they, they don't need, in, in one sense you can say, it's not essential to have a playground surface for the religion. But that's not the issue here. The issue is, is that the government is setting up this program and targeting them. If they would, if they would say uh, everybody can get a rubber surface for their playground except African Americans, oh, it's not that big of a deal, you can still function pretty well without it, that argument wouldn't be accepted and shouldn't be accepted in this context either. Personally, I think a good argument can be made that the First Amendment doesn't even require that the government be neutral on religion. But even if you accept the idea that, okay, the government needs to be neutral on religion, this is not neutrality. This is actually punishing religion. The state of Missouri is making a somewhat Orwellian type argument that in order to show its neutrality towards religion, it needs to treat religion worse than everybody else. That to me is not neutrality. I guess we shouldn't be surprised, but it seems some pretty powerful and well-funded groups are again trying to make hay at the expense of this school in their attempts to separate God from state when that's not what the Constitution requires. In the Trinity Lutheran case, it has been both amazing and disappointing to me how groups like the American Civil Liberties Union, Americans United for Separation of Church and State, etc., are not pausing and saying rubber tire surfaces for playgrounds, that's pretty obscure, that's pretty small potatoes. Maybe this is okay that the churches can participate and apply on equal grounds as every other nonprofit. They're not saying that. This is a threat to the constitutional order if Trinity Lutheran is allowed to apply and receive a grant for tire uh, a playground service made out of recycled tires. That to me is pretty unbelievable and just shows how extreme some of our opponents can be. While the facts of the Trinity Lutheran case might seem like a small matter, the implications for religious freedom are enormous which is why the Alliance Defending Freedom argued this case before the Supreme Court in April. Because Trinity Lutheran is a school of faith, they were excluded from a government program and treated differently than other schools. That is the essence of discrimination. Later in this program, you will hear about a highly funded organization that has been fostering this same sort of discrimination for decades. But this isn't the first time Christians have been treated unfairly. It certainly won't be the last. There is a battle going on against our Christian brothers and sisters around the world. My friend and mentor, Dr. D. James Kennedy, discusses this battle in this portion of his message, The War Against Christianity. We live in an age, I am happy to say, in an age which stands four square against bigotry and prejudice, unless, that is, unless that bigotry is directed against Christians, Christ, or Christianity. Today, the only group which you can hold up to public mockery and pillaring are Christians. My friends, we're talking today about the age-long war against Christianity, a war which has sometimes been cold and sometimes hot, and I want you to know that it's heating up again in America. Christians 
in recent television programs and motion pictures have been held up as bigots, as censors, as intolerant, as narrow-minded, as ignoramuses, as those who are a threat to freedom, those who are a threat to the very well-being of our lives, as one pilot who professed his Christianity and paraded it before the cameras uh, is made out to be before he goes berserk and begins to kill all sorts of people. As Jesus himself said, that the world would hate us. And why? He said, if the world hate you, know that it hated me first. And so he sets before us the world and the church. Now the church consists of all of those who are united by a living faith to Jesus Christ and in whose hearts he lives and his spirit and love dwell. The world consists of all of those who are not connected to God through Jesus Christ. They are the aggregates of the godless. So I would ask you, in which group are you found? The real church or the world? Now they're both united. The church, in spite of its apparent divisions all over the world, is united in one in Jesus Christ. There is one faith that joins us to one Savior. And so the world, in spite of all of its divisions, political, economic, religious, and all of the pagan religions of the world, they are all united in their inveterate hostility to Jesus Christ. Well, what can we do about this war against Christ and Christianity that is heating up, we do have the power of the gospel. And we can use that gospel to transform the world into the church, because all of us were born as a part of this world. By living lives of moral integrity and the beauty of love, we can attract the world. And Christ, the loving and gracious Christ, even as he is besmirched by the world, shines ever brighter in his wondrous glory. We can share the gospel. And one of the reasons, my friend, that the war is heating up today is because we have been derelict in our responsibility to do that. And so the number of those who are not a part of Christ has been growing and multiplying and becoming stronger and stronger until now. They are turning on the church, upon Christians who founded this nation. Isn't that incredible? The barbarians are at the door, and they are people that we should have been converting into Christians years ago. We can use the gospel. And also, we can rejoice. Jesus said, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. But we can rejoice and we can love our enemies and we can use the gospel to transform them into part of the body of Christ to part of his church. That's what we can do as the war against Christianity heats up again in our time. As Dr. Kennedy shared in this portion of his message today, the age-long war against Christianity is heating up again in America. One organization that continually tries to turn up the temperature in that war is the so-called American Civil Liberties Union, or the ACLU. They have helped support the case against Trinity Lutheran we told you about earlier, calling upon the government to discriminate against a school seeking to provide for the safety of little children, simply because of the school's faith commitment. For decades, this same ACLU has hammered away in the courts at the First Amendment 
to impose the separation of God and state, which the founders never intended. Here's John Rabe with more. Groups like the ACLU and, and the ACLU's allies have been undermining our law for some time now um, and undermining our rights. The ACLU is against freedom of speech in many instances. They are all for atheists having freedom of speech, but they want to limit other individuals from having freedom of speech. For years, the American Civil Liberties Union, better known as the ACLU, which claims to defend constitutional freedom, has actually done exactly the opposite. They've targeted people who are simply exercising their religion as guaranteed under the First Amendment. So when you see some of the conscience cases that we work on, where the ACLU is on the other side, trying to force a, a, a grandmother who's a florist uh, to, uh, to just be able to, to live out her faith in her floral business. Uh, and the ACLU and, their, and its allies uh, want to, to make sure that this, this poor woman is punished uh, in Baronel Stutzman. And there are a number of cases like that uh, where they are, are going after individual people of faith and trying to, uh, to send a message that uh, living out your faith is, not, is no longer going to be allowed in the public square. That's a really troubling step. What groups like the ACLU are ultimately creating is a climate where denying an individual's right to freely exercise religion is acceptable. The plan seems to be to simply label the religious person a bigot or a hater, and then convince the culture that they're not protected by the First Amendment. You know, in my lifetime, I've always considered freedom of religion and freedom of speech as an inalienable right, and never had to think twice about uh, living it out, but the reality is today uh, that there are consequences in the United States of America for being openly Christian. Uh, as a government employee um, living out my faith, uh, I never thought that I'd have to be forced to make a choice as to whether I would live out my faith or keep my job. Kelvin Cochran was the fire chief for the city of Atlanta with a long and prestigious career. But in early 2015, he experienced a direct attack on his religious liberty for simply writing a book on his own time and giving copies to members of his Bible study group. I was blessed to have a, what I call a childhood dream come true fairy tale career, uh, living out my faith. Um, and little did I uh, know and would ever think that writing a book for a Christian men Bible study would cause my childhood dream come true fairy tale career uh, to come to an end. In the month of uh, November 2014, the week before Thanksgiving, um, I was suspended for 30 days without pay. Uh, and when I returned to work on January the 6th of 2015, I was terminated from employment after 34 years of faithful service in the fire and emergency services industry. The city of Atlanta fired Kelvin Cochran for daring to express his traditional Christian beliefs. Since he was a government employee, the argument was made that Cochran violated the Establishment of Religion Clause in the First Amendment. To have a stellar career as I had, to be immediately and abruptly uh, changed, the respect and credibility I built for 30 years was taken away in a day. My reputation was instantaneously destroyed because of what the city of Atlanta uh, did to me. While the ACLU isn't directly involved in Chief Cochran's case, one might expect them to defend him. Instead, the ACLU has long propagated the ridiculous notion that any religious activity by a government official constitutes an establishment of religion. They have even argued that private citizens exercising religion on public property establishes a religion, like a child praying over a school lunch. What they've essentially done is turn the First Amendment upside down. In the United States of America, our country, our Constitution, guarantees the freedoms um, that we have, that we should be free to live out our faith and also maintain gainful employment at the same time. They've, they've lost their respect, I'm afraid, uh, not only for free speech, but for free exercise of religion. Um, and and it's, it's really troubling to see some of the positions that they're taking right now. Losing my job is a small price to pay 
uh, for standing on biblical truths and standing for Christ. Um, and, you know, I, I just believe that uh, in all of these cases um, that God is with us, uh, people need to know that if they ever find themselves having to make a choice as to live out their faith or keep their job, because God is faithful, they should always make the choice of living out their faith. God will take care of us. For whatever happens after that, God is with us. The ACLU is just one of the organizations attempting to marginalize and silence Christians. We're in the midst of producing a special expose on another such organization, the Southern Poverty Law Center. This extremely well-funded group seeks to silence Christians by having them designated as hate groups, simply for defending a traditional biblical view of marriage. Their work is dangerous and potentially deadly. It's part of the ongoing war against Christianity. Here's my friend Jennifer Kennedy Cassidy to share some vital resources with you regarding these threats. Jennifer, welcome. Thank you, Frank. As my father, Dr. D. James Kennedy, shared on this program today, there is indeed a war against Christianity taking place. We have a special two DVD or two CD set called The War Against Christianity to help you understand it. It features the full length version of the message from my dad that you heard just a portion of today. It also includes a second message, the culture war in America. In addition, we want to send you a new special report, the Southern Poverty Law Center exposed. This printed report exposes the Southern Poverty Law Center, which once did important work combating hate groups like the KKK, but now classifies Christians who defend biblical marriage and sexuality as hate groups. In one case, their false designation even caused a radical homosexual activist to start firing a gun inside the offices of a Christian ministry, injuring a security guard. You need to know the truth about this dangerous organization. We'll send you the printed special report, the Southern Poverty Law Center Exposed, as well as the two DVD or two CD set, The War Against Christianity, as our thanks for your generous donation of $50 or more to the ongoing work of this ministry. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 111154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339 or call toll free 877-962-7677 or go online to djkm.org. June is the end of our fiscal year and we need you to step forward and stand with us as we stand for truth and defend your freedom. A major organization is declaring Christian ministries to be hate groups, including this one, and it has literally led to violence against Christians. We need to get the truth out, but we can't do it without your help. Please pray for us and consider giving a generous donation to our work to help us shine the light on the war against Christianity. Some of you can give $50. Some of you can give $100 or even $1,000. Every generous donation helps us to put together these programs and resources, which you're just not seeing anywhere else. As our thanks for your donation of $50 or more, we'll send you the two DVD or two CD set, The War Against Christianity, as well as the new special report, The Southern Poverty Law Center Exposed. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339, or call toll free 877-962-7677 or go online to djkm.org. There is strategy behind the efforts to silence Christians and conservatives today, and in recent months we have seen its dramatically increasing impact. The radical left employs this strategy on college campuses and in the public square. By declaring that the First Amendment does not protect so-called hate speech, these radicals argue that it can be legally censored. And big surprise, they then characterize the views of traditional Christians and conservatives as the kind of hate speech worthy of censorship. 
No less than Howard Dean, former chairman of the Democrat Party, tweeted, hate speech is not protected by the First Amendment. But this strategy is both fallacious and mendacious. First of all, pace Howard Dean, there is no exception in the First Amendment for so-called hate speech. In fact, the First Amendment was designed specifically to protect unpopular speech and even speech some consider abhorrent. So this deceptive censorship scheme is wrong legally and constitutionally. Second, it is ridiculous to characterize those who hold historical biblical views on things like sex, gender, and marriage as proponents of hate speech. Listen, you don't have to wake up Einstein to understand this. What they really mean is that if you object to anything they advocate, you must be a hater. This is, of course, a silly and pedantic way to look at dissent. But this is exactly what we've heard in recent days from campus radicals, Twitter trolls, and the United Nations, among others. If this were not so sad and dangerous, you would almost have to laugh. By their own standards, two of their liberal progressive champions are classic haters. In 2008, both Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama ran for president espousing opposition to same-sex marriage. In the fevered imaginings of our liberal socialist friends, they were engaging in hate speech and should have been censored. In reality, telling the truth is the loving thing to do. Human beings thrive in one man, one woman marriages and in living out the biological sex that God gave them. And empirical research shows that turning from God's design is the pathway to misery. Speaking biblical truth is not hate speech and we will not be silenced by facile and disingenuous labeling. D. James Kennedy Ministries is standing for truth and defending your freedom. I'm Frank Wright. Thanks for joining us for Truths That Transform. We'll see you next time. Next week on Truths That Transform. The new tolerance. You have to accept all of their values, all of their beliefs. They believe that they're going to impose their worldview on Christians. And if we don't accept it, then we're going to be punished. That's next week. Today's program is available on DVD for your gift to this ministry of any amount. Please call, write, or log on to our website today. This has been a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries.